Hi guys, it is April from Getting Hugo With It. Today I'm here to share with you the best contemporary books that I read in 2018. So let's get into it. One thing that I realized as I was making the list of contemporary books that I read and I was making a list of my favorites was I really enjoy contemporary. Like I love it and I don't read enough contemporary. So that's like a little mental note for myself to pick up more from my contemporary shelves because I'm pretty hooked. Um, so I have, I think four books I wanted to share with you here. Um, the first we'll start with is The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon. This is my first Joanna Cannon and I'm desperate to read um, three things about Elsie because man she can write. This is about two little girls in the 60s I believe and they uh, discover that one of their neighbors wives just like vanished and they're very concerned about her and so they go door to door asking about her and whatever happened to her so they're trying to get to the bottom of of this mystery and they're also trying to like discover themselves they're just trying to discover god um and this is multiple points of view you are meeting everyone on the street and you are diving into their own secrets and you're diving into a mystery that happened 10 years ago as well and that I did not expect. There are two mysteries in this book that you're trying to solve and I adored this book. I really thought the writing was really wonderful. I really was so connected to these little girls. You are rooting for these girls the whole time. It is just such, such a pleasure to watch them. Um, blossom through the summer. So yeah, that's the trouble with goats and sheep. I also have to share Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. This is about a young woman named Eleanor. She has everything together. I mean, she has a good job. Um, she goes home though on the weekends and she binge drinks and she has uh, a difficult time of it. She's socially awkward as well. And one day a man falls in the street and some guy from IT, from her work, shows up at the same time and they are both helping this man. And there's a friendship between the three of them that is formed. And this was really talented character development. You are watching Eleanor break open her shell because she has had a, a very difficult life and you will learn that throughout the book you get to know you get to know Eleanor just as much as her friends do in this book and you get to know them at the pace that she'll allow you to get to know her and I just thought Gail Honeyman coming up with that and pacing that and organizing all of that I, I just I was truly blown away. I loved Eleanor. I miss Eleanor. I, I wish that there was going to be a sequel to this. There probably isn't, but I can't wait to see what else Gil Honeyman comes out with because wow. Another book that I, I really enjoyed that ha made me feel, uh, it was like controversial inside of myself. You get frustrated sometimes and then you're okay and they're frustrated and that's the way of Celeste Ng, and this is Little Fires Everywhere. This is about a little town called Shaker Heights, where I believe Celeste Ng actually grew up at some point in her childhood. And everything in Shaker Heights is just so. Houses are painted certain colors. Um, the development of this little community is done in a very strategic, planned way. And everyone does fairly well for themselves. And we meet a single mother who moves to Shaker Heights. She's an artist. She has a young daughter named Pearl. And she's just not, not Shaker Heights material. 
if that's how I'll say it. And um, she meets Mrs. Richardson. She's renting from Mrs. Richardson and their families get really involved with each other. They become really close. Um, Mia, our artist's daughter, Pearl, becomes really close friends with Mrs. Richardson's kids. And early on in the book, you discover that uh, Mrs. Richardson's best friend adopts a Chinese American baby and Mia knew the birth mother and doesn't think that this was right. And it is about that tension um, between the two families, um, who is right and who is wrong. I did feel led at the end to have a certain opinion, which I did not hold. I just felt like no one was right and no one was wrong. And I, I did think that there was so much gray in here. I thought there was more gray than a black and white conclusion um, that should be formed. Um, but I, I really loved this book. It was maddening sometimes, but I was flipping the pages. I read this so quickly. So good. And then the last favorite contemporary of 2018 was Hum If You Don't Know the Words. This is such a lovely and like heartbreaking book that gave me goosebumps. Uh, this is about a little girl in South Africa named Robin and we're following her after her parents die and she's moving in with an aunt. And then we also follow Beauty who is a black woman who has lost her daughter, like her daughter is missing and it's a very dangerous time. This is um, apartheid in South Africa, like it's it's a dangerous time for a young black girl to go missing. And she's trying to find her and their storylines come together and weave together and I care so much about these characters immensely. Like I haven't felt such immense feelings for characters like I have in this book. I just wanted them both to do okay and I, I wanted only good things for these characters and I just adored them both and the writing was amazing. There's a little twist at the beginning, uh, which I will not say what it is, but it gave me chills. It gave me chills. I need to read more contemporary. Can you tell how excited I am about these books? I need to read more contemporary. So uh, those are the best contemporary books that I read in 2018. Please let me know in the comments below what your favorite contemporary was that you read in 2018 because I think I've caught the bug and I think I really want to start adding more to my shelves and to my TBR for 2019. Okay, I'll see you next time guys. Bye!